Well, as promised in the Ron Johnson show, I got to talk about this Cowboys game. And I said there was something in the Cowboys game that I feel like 2023, the Minnesota Vikings are looking for a defensive coordinator. And when you're looking for a defensive coordinator, um, the question is, one, what can we get in the draft? So now they have to figure that out right now. Four draft picks right now. They have to get a plan. Quasey, what's your what's your thoughts? And, and this is what people don't know. GMs are calling GMs right now, especially GMs that are out. Like GMs that are out, they don't care about the freaking playoffs and the Super Bowl. They're calling each other now, like, hey, man, like I know the trade deadline's coming or whatever, the offseason's coming up, and I know the trades are possibly going to start to happen. I know the draft is – like, what are you thinking? Oh, man, what are you thinking? You tell me. I mean, you tell me. You know, like they're they're playing that game now. You know, they're going to see each other at different events, Super Bowl, uh, Pro Bowl if they're down there. But this is that time. This is that time where GMs now if, – if anybody's ever wanted to kind of get an inside look, watch watch a, a draft day because uh, I know we talked about that before mm-hmm. with an exec – and he said, it's kind of like that. Like, it's kind of like that. Uh, not so much sneaky, like, well, what's wrong with this guy? Why aren't you drafting him? Will you tell me? What do you want? Like, it, it, but it is those conversations. Like, they're calling each other at breakfast. They're calling each other while they're at the gym. Like, yo, man, what's what's going on? And so when you think about, and that's why uh, Vrabel, when you think about the Tennessee Titans, their trade with A.J. Brown, that's why he was so pissed when it happened. Because he's like, we didn't even talk about this. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all just traded away my future. Like he was going to make me the next great head coach. But here's what I, to pay off the tease, the Dallas Cowboys this weekend to start the game. And this is against one of the best offenses. When you talk about personnel, movement, alignment, assignment, shuffs, shuffle, or shuffs and shuffles, shuffles <laughs> and shifts, <laughs> shuffles and shifts, not shuffs and shuffles, uh, shuffles and shifts, motions and changes. It's the 49ers. They came out in a four, two, five. They went four D linemen kicking Demarcus Lawrence down, hand in the ground, and they went three linebackers, but they put their other linebacker on the end, and uh, they removed. Uh, I think Anthony Barr was removed out of that, and he, I think he was questionable anywhere hurt. But they the way they started with those four showed me that you can still be a three four, but have a four two front. And then what you do is you kick the nickel down. Yeah, they took Anthony Barr out because they bought the nickel and it was five DBs. They bought the nickel down, and the nickel safety, which was J. Ron Curse, was in the box, and then the other safety would come down in the box. So could the Vikings do that? Yes. You think about Lewis Seen. He could easily be that guy. He could be your 50B that's in as a nickel, but he's the linebacker, not Shannon Sullivan as a cover guy, as a linebacker. But now you have a safety that's a linebacker that can cover, that can play in space, that understands – to drop back, but also strong enough, big enough, fast enough to make tackles on running backs to take on, uh, you know, get the de- defeat linebackers. Now, again, we haven't seen Lewis seen completely in the NFL season yet. So maybe that's a little far. J. Ron Curse, it took him a while to get to where he's at. I've always said you can go back and listen to my my, my post game and pregame. They should have the big nickel was talked about for years in Minnesota and they never really did it. And then it was too late. Uh, but J. Ron Curse showed like this is what a big nickel looks like. This is what a big nickel back that can cover anybody looks like. And so Brian Flores, and that's the talk. Brian Flores is possibly going to be the Vikings defense coordinator. He's in for a visit. I was told by a source inside the building. He's coming. Um, they like him. They want to see what he's learned from the Steelers. So understand that. He spent time with Mike Tomlin. The Vikings love Mike Tomlin. Like everybody loves Mike Tomlin. But the Vikings love Mike Tomlin. So what did he learn from Mike Tomlin, and then Mike Tomlin learned from him. The Steelers run a 3-4. The Vikings have a kind of a 3-4 look, but this is the difference. When you look at the Miami Dolphins, they play head up on the center. So it's like a cock nose. You're a two-gapper. That means you have both gaps on the opposite side of the center. So you become the control guy. So you need a violent Jordan Davis, a Linval Joseph in his prime. You need a violent guy. Um, you look at the, the way the tackles are. They're shading the eye of the tackle. So could Daniil Hunter do that? Yes. Daniil Hunter can always be your wide guy because one of these guys, he's inside the tackle where now Daniil Hunter can work inside the tackle or work right outside the tackle. And then you have Zadarius Smith theoretically standing up and you bring in another linebacker to stand up or defensive end and you get your same front. But now Daniil Hunter has his hand in the ground. I feel like Brian Flores can get that out of the Vikings defense. Behind that, 
you play a cover two shell. You always are in some type of two shell, but it could be two man. It could be, you know, off two where your corners are going to play off like it's four and they're just going to walk up into two. But you're always but you're always in a shell. And then you're going to have that Tampa two backer, which could be Eric Kendricks. It could be Jordan Hicks, depending on who. But guy's going to could be Brian Asamoa. A guy's going to drop back into coverage and he's going to like you watch uh, uh, Warner with the 49ers. number 54. He ran the middle of the field with CD Lamb. That's not normal. That was for a linebacker to do that. But I feel like Brian Asamoah, not feel like I know Brian Asamoah can do that. I know he can run step for step with a guy like CD Lamb in the middle of the field, knowing that once you go up the seam, there's only a, one route you're running, which is a go. Like you're not running. Now, technically, you could do some Rams stuff, and the Rams got Anthony Barr like this. They made you think it was going to be a go, and it would be like a, a post by the running back because uh, he ran him up the middle and then ran a post. Um, we've seen Christian McCaffrey run up the middle and then run a corner, but those are, those are next level running backs with the receiver. You already have wide guys. You have him going up the seam. He knew, Hey, I'm going to just face guard him and run where he goes. And then when I think the ball's coming, I'm gonna put my hands up. That was crazy that he was able to cover him down the field. So I feel like that's what the Vikings could do. But with Brian Flores, I like it. I, I like, it's a younger voice. It's a guy, like I said, that's learned from Mike Tomlin. Uh, Mike Tomlin is one of the best defensive defensive coaches, and not just defense, like player coaches, player coaches in the NFL. And I feel like Brian Flores has learned a lot. I think Brian Flores got a raw deal in Miami. I don't think they ever gave him a chance. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I go with the Brian Flores. But I, after watching this weekend's games and defensively, I think the Vikings could get it done with a guy like him that can bring in the tight front to cover all the gaps because that's where it was a lot of gap integrity questions. But then the coverage behind it as well, when you think about the Steelers and how they cover and how they cover a lot of field. Um, and it's a mindset. You get a defensive coordinator comes in and changes the mindset of the team too. Or the, the DB is like, look, man, we're going to be physical. We're going to be we're gonna be bullies. Like the, the 49ers were bullies. They were blasting the Cowboys players. Like they were playing bully ball and that's that's where i think the vikings can get to i don't know sam what do you think 15 years in the patriots organization for flores two out of three winning seasons in miami spending time around tomlin that's an awesome resume yeah. i mean that should be the number one candidate and i think he has a head coaching interview too somewhere yep. so they have to to make sure he doesn't get hired away to be a head coach the only problem with this is that if you do get him it might not be for long because I think if they had any success, I think Flores would be a head coaching uh, like major candidate for right. the next coaching cycle. So you might not have him for long. Um, but it sounds like what you're saying is that with the Cowboys, they were like coming up with creative concepts for their personnel. Yeah. The Vikings just didn't do that enough last year. Correct. And they didn't do anything creative with Chandon Sullivan in the nickel. They didn't do anything creative with Harrison Smith at Facts. safety. The most creative thing they did which wasn't even good, was drop Daniil Hunter in coverage, which was a bad <laughs> idea. So I think they can, just by oh, yeah. even introducing any new idea at all, they'll be more creative than they were last year. Facts. Um, yeah, and, and again, creative. Creativity. Uh, you, you hit the nail on the head. When you look at, I mean, watching the Cowboys 49ers game, um, it, was, it was crazy to see the number of like safety blitzes, nickel blitzes, I mean, they were blasting Brock Purdy. 